Hi guys, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the motherboard in this because I'm not happy with the one that's in there. It's alright, it works, but uh, I just want something else in there. If you're wondering what I'm now doing, I'm magnetising a screwdriver. It's an old hard drive magnet, and I'm using that because it's a good strong magnet. Do to magnetize the screwdriver is run a magnet on there like that. Then, and the camera focuses. Mm. See, the magnetic screwdriver. That's why when I scrapped one of my hard drives, I kept a couple of the magnets. So they're pretty strong magnets. Okay, that's going to make life a lot easier. I don't know why, but the light in this kitchen makes that lens look all blurry and cloudy. Anyway, let's get the side cover off. So, now, I've got to drop another board out. Uh, so, I need to unplug the chassis fan. I need to unplug the front audio. I need to unplug the USBs and the SAT cables. And I've got cables sitting here, there, and every bloody way. Plug power. Twenty four pin connector. Unplug twelve volt. For some reason this has got two. Two twelve volt cables. Never said that before. Right. Unplug the power switches and LEDs. And they're tangled. Uh, I've got spaghetti junction of wire. Oh, let's go into the front fan. Two out the memory, because I need that anyway. This board, as it still works, I'll probably try it on eBay. I haven't got a use for it. Um, I'm only really changing the motherboard out because I don't like it. As <laughs> simple as that. One, I've got other motherboards that I like better, so... I'll uh, take you through in it when I've done this, and uh, we'll go choose a motherboard from my big pile. I'll sell it with all the processor and heat sink on. I just can't include any memory because I haven't got any. easier if I laid this down on the worktop. Let's take those off. Let's lay them on there. And remember they're not scrap ones. Let's look at the pile of scrap ones up there to get rid of. Let's see see how well I can do this one handed, shall we? See if I've missed any screws. Yes, I can see two I've missed. I think I've never done that one I'm stuck in the board. Okay, hang on. One there. Ooh. Hope that hasn't taken out the the uh, standoff with it. No. It's all comfort. Yeah, it has. I thought it. No, three of them have decided to take standoffs with them. Ugh. Now you know why I keep standoffs. Because instead of pissing around trying to get them off, I'm just giving my little cut screws here. 
and takes them out. <laughs> like a cheek. And goes one. Just got to make sure they're the same height. That would be beneficial if I make sure they're all the same height. No, that can be a bit too tall. Cool. That one's somewhere on the board. Look at this, look. You see them? All in the same row as well. Three of them. I'll, obviously, I'll uh, take those off before it's sold. I just found that a bit odd. That's uh, three in a row. Mm. I may actually have to rescue these. It might be easier than uh, going through them. So all I do is put a pair of claws in the back to hold the stand off and undo it with a screwdriver on the other side. That's probably because the wrong screws were used. Even if I got a couple of quid for the board, I'd be happy. It's got four slots for DDR2 memory, so six USB ports and eight um, VGA and DVI slots. Okay, move this one again. All them screws up there. Tip the screw plot out and we'll see what we can find. There are loads of standoffs in here. They're all different bloody heights typically. So that one is that close? That one's close enough. This is I'm changing them just in case the threads have got damaged. I don't think they have, but I just think they screwed in too tight and I got put off with the board. Uh, actually, let's leave those there. Let's go choose a board so I can get the um, standoffs back in the right place because it can vary a little bit from board to board. So, the choices I've got. God, the light's crap in here. Let's come into the light. Let's sort of lay it on the light bulb, shall we? I've got this gigabit, gigabyte board. It's a bit dusty, but that's nothing me brush can't fix. And the zip tie on the edge here for some reason. And uh, what else have I got? Uh, no, those are XP boards. I was actually thinking putting this one on because as you can see I've tested it and it's a dual core. Uh, it doesn't matter about the heat sink because I've got one right there I can pinch. Um, yeah, it's got DVI on the back and VGA. It's only got four USB ports but it's only going to be a test rig isn't it so I don't want anything too fancy smancy in it. Um, I've got another gigabit board here with an Intel processor on it. I could throw that in. Just because. Uh, I'm not going to throw the MSI board in. Or I could get even fancier and go for this one. Which is an ASUS board. It's got four, s 
four memory slots on it and I don't want to fill them all as it is only the Windows 10 rig that I'm changing the board in I think I think this green one I think that's the one I'm going to go for yeah I settled I'm going to go for the green one when I uh, locate a heat sink for it, I'll just nick it off one of the other boards. Ah, uh, crumbs. Where did I put those? I can see a tube somewhere. Oops. Oh dear. There's still on a circuit board that had about five bulbs on it. And, uh, well, it's probably got about four bulbs on it now because I just I haven't broke one. Okay, I'm going to need a standoff. What is it? That one. And that one. Like so. So that's the standoff back in. Uh, I think before I put the motherboard in there, I am going to uh, thermal that up and heat sink on now <laughs> somewhere I've got two tubes of thermal post bollocks if I know where I've put it crikey I need the bloody IO shield as well uh, ooh I actually think this one might be the one lying on the floor. That's the other reason I'm changing the board as well, because my OCD kicked in and uh, I wanted an IO shield and I didn't have one for the other board. So I don't know if I'd actually get anything for it if I did sell it. Someone might want it just to play around with, because it does work. No, I only kept the motherboards that did work. Uh, uh, nuts. Um, I could actually pinch a heat sink off that one, but uh, nah. Go for this one. So. I've got a hit in wood. That's shiny. <laughs> that ain't good. It's got to have thermal paste on it. Oh yeah, I remember. I cleaned them all off when I was looking at them, checking what they were. I've just got to put the thermal paste back on, but I can't remember where I put the thermal paste tubes. Um, I know I had them in the kitchen a while back. Yeah. It's going to go on there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go on there. Right. Hum, 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 hum. I'm pretty certain that's not going to be in the kitchen amongst that crap. I'm just trying to think. What did I do with them? Hmm. <laughs> there's no point putting the heat sink on without um, putting the thermal paste on round and round we go I'll find them in a minute as with the uh, laptop adapter I was looking for in a previous video they're probably right under my nose somewhere and I just can't see them Sorry, Mr. Nemo, I'm going to have to move you for a second. Ah, I found him. You all saw him somewhere. There we go. I want the one tube. It's amazing how long a tube of this actually lasts. I suppose it depends how often you fix computers. Uh, I don't know if I can get this one handed. I'll try without the board moving. But what I do is I always put a square. 
yay big in the middle. I know some people will leave it like that, but I actually find that will cool pretty well. You uh, get a nice even spread layer on it like that. Put it all over my finger. Okay, well, that didn't actually work at washing it off. It just <laughs> just spread it around my hand. Bloody stuff. Right. I did actually watch videos actually on YouTube where they said the best way to do it is to uh, do it the way I've just done it. A nice even coat over the metal pad on the heatsink. Oh, you stupid thing, get hooked on that side. Hang on a second, I'm going to need two hands because I need one to hold the stupid thing in place. Ah. It would appear that possibly this heat sink won't fit this thing, even though it's an AMD heat sink, so it should. It's not on game, is it? Over there. There we go. Hmm. I actually uh we done this, I can actually see. Let's uh, smooth it out again. We were good for battery, we're good for everything. There we go. Except I've got a prat and put the camera tripod on the bloody IO plate. Okay. what I'm doing. Sort of. Ish. Kinda. <laughs> Alright. Screwdriver. Find. 
square is not the fifth. I do highly recommend that a magnetic screwdriver is used to do these. It makes life so much easier. It really does. Two of those have gone done. One. Oh, that one obviously didn't. One has, and it's like this one. I think what I might do is actually find a
all that then. Yeah. Why won't it do it to that? Put a bloody standoff in here that I can use. There he is. If you do it properly now, you won't have trouble if you have to take them all out in the future. Because it's all done and sorted. Right. I've got cables onto the board, I'll pull them out in a sec. Like that. Okay, I've got a few screws down here. Use just to start it off. One in there. And one of these. See, getting screws at the spots like that makes life easier. The bloody screw didn't go into that one, but I'm going to take the freaking board off again. Getting annoying man. Oh. That wouldn't screw in because it's the wrong bloody screw. of them are there. Let's well, move one like that. Then I here we go. Ouch. Might actually work. No. in the thing, in the chassis. Um, how many more do I need? Two. Thank you, little school. Hmm. Oh, I've got loads like that. I just can't see the damn things at the minute. A whole lot out. No, that's a completely different screw. Ah, no. Damn. Ah. 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 Well, that's getting annoying now. My last one. Yes. Good. Okay. Some cables. Hey, they're uh, not there. Right. I'm just going to tuck that power cable up there. Take me off of the... That's where I had you standing. Um, right. So I've got to find a home for that. Right down here. 
It's a uh, far corner. I've got no idea why they do that with these chassis fan sockets. Put it as far away from the actual mounting point as possible. Unless it's for the uh, front fans. There's an even access there, I don't know. That would actually make more logical sense, I suppose, if they put it on for the uh, front fan. But I don't know why they don't just bother putting uh, more than one on. Where are the bloody plugs going now? Are they different then? Well, they might be different plugs. So they're both the same. Right. Now we've got all the uh, front board stuff. So we've got audio. Which has got to go on that way. Like so. We've got SATA cables. Can't see any numbers on them. So I'm worry about what way around they go. I don't think it actually matters too much. Put cables down there out of the way. Actually, I can do it this way around. ROM drive. Hard drive. USB. And we've got three USB headers in this machine, or on this board. We've got one. Two. Just make sure I'm getting the connectors around the right way. Okay. Uh, there's the 24 the power connector to go in there. I can actually go over that for the moment. Our memory go in the bogey coloured slots. Well that's just more like mint green I suppose. And booger green. One and we'll make it up to 4 gigs. Well, that was fun. First the memory card filled up, so I had to go and dump the videos off the memory card, which is why we got interrupted so abruptly. And then the batteries decided to say a big F U to me as well, so I had to go and change those. So, now we're back. I've turned the PC back off so we can start again. So, uh, should we start again? Here in front there, so you can see the monitor, and we'll press the button. I don't know why it hangs like this. Hangs at first, no video output, and then all of a sudden, it turns on. And it did the same with the other motherboard, because I thought it was the motherboard at first. But, uh, I suppose it could be the hard drive, I don't know. This actually boots up pretty quick for just with a dual core processor, AMD processor, and four gigabytes of DDR2 memory. It's actually booting pretty damn quickly. So here we go. Mind you, I haven't got much crap installed on this, have I, so... I may install some of the other programs and stuff I use on, the, on my main PC 
and then see how fast this um, will boot up, the more junk I install on it. Um, I was actually going to do something specific on this, and I completely forgot what it was. Oh yeah. Let's see, is it still going to do weird things on me? Yep. Yep, so I still can't change that. Go away. I'll make the whole system go nutty. Uh, <laughs> forgotten how to get to it. Right, ran some updates, so... Okay, now that I've done that, nothing wants to work. Well, there we go, it was time to load. <sighs> this personalization. Hmm. This picture. Ah, so we can change it. Oh, that's a nice one. We'll keep that one, shall we? I'm going to put on a slide show. Yay! Yeah, that's, oof, that's got rid of the whole bloody thing, hasn't it? Oh, you've changed your language as well. Set time automatically. Can I change that? need to change that. Okay, so we can't turn change set time automatically on. Or do we have to click this? Oh, we have to click that. There we go. Mm -hmm. Time zone is fine. Yep, that's all fine. United Kingdom for languages. Sweet. Ooh, the devices. Correct misspelled words. Highlight misspelled words. That could be handy if your spelling isn't too good. Mine is bad, but it's not good either. Autoplay defaults. with Windows 10 there's still a bloody dial up Ugh. why? Oh damn it, I just closed it. What's 
the text and controls on the screen. Should turn the narrator on to see what happens. Oh, we can choose a voice. Motherboard. That's 
not why I changed the motherboard, I just wanted something different in there. Well, yeah. Yeah, snap that one in there. Um. The cable would stay up there somewhere out of the way. Not get caught in there either. Hmm. Hopefully that will be fine like that. Well, as you can see, speed wise, Windows 10 is actually pretty great on this. So, pretty much, if you've got something like DDR2 RAM and a dual core processor at least, yeah, you'll be fine running Windows 10. Uh, obviously, the more power you got, the better, especially um, if you're a heavy PC user, that multitasks a lot. Right, I think we're in the video now, now that I'm done playing. I was just going to summarise originally when I turned the camera back on and then end the video, but I'm uh, a little bit carried away playing with uh, the machine. But uh, I have to say, I'm starting to really like Windows 10, and I'm looking forward to the main release. I never thought I'd actually say that about an operating system. I still love Windows XP. That's still one of my favourite operating systems. I was never keen on Windows 98. I've always managed to crash a Windows 95 PC just by trying to play a CD. Don't ask me how. <laughs> but I have managed to crash a Windows 95 PC just by putting a CD into the CD1 drive and wanting to play it. Um, Vista, I never bothered upgrading, upgrading to Vista because I heard, had heard quite a lot of bad and negative stuff about it from a lot of my friends who are also into computers and building their own PCs and lots of other bad reviews at the time when that was in the process of being built and after it had been released so I avoided Windows Vista and just stuck with Windows XP and I think it was a couple of years ago I upgraded to Windows 7 which I've been using ever since, and now Windows 10 is coming out, so I'll be upgrading it again. So, yay. Hmm. I could be naughty and take advantage of their uh, free upgrade if you're running Windows 7 or whatever, if it would work, of course. I um, put Windows 7 on a bunch of my machines and then upgrading them to Windows 10. <laughs> I'd be cheating, but I'm not sure if that would work. Might get away with doing a couple. I don't know, they'd probably, they'd probably log your um, IP address. But of course, if you've got a router like that where you can plug in five... Um, five four Ethernet cables, so that's four computers, that would be four different IP addresses, because obviously they all can't share the same one. So, something like that might work. I don't recommend it, because it is naughty and taking advantage of a system. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend going to do it, unless you really don't give a rat's ass. I doubt I'll do it, it's just something I thought of that, you know, you could do if you really wanted to. Um, I think what I might do later is see if Windows 10 will go onto my old 
Dell dimension up on the water. But actually, what I'll do, I'll end this video and I'll make another one straight afterwards. Because I'll put it on the Dell. Try a factory built PC and see how well that will upgrade because obviously this is technically a custom built PC. It's not one that's built in a factory. I've uh, got the parts and slapped it all together. Um, I also want to try and install it on a machine that's only got DDR memory to see how well it works. Just to really see how low you can go with it before it's basically unusable. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So, thank you for watching the video and putting up with the interruption when the card got full. I do apologise for that. One of these days I'll upgrade the memory card again. Seriously, I had a one gigabyte memory card in this camera at first because I was only used. This is before I started making YouTube videos. I was only using the camera to take photos for putting stuff on eBay and so forth. Um, then so I found an eight gigabyte memory card on offer at my local Sainsbury's, so I grabbed it because it was on offer. So I've got an 8GB card in here now, and it still fills up quick. I can get an hour's worth of video on the memory card. So it's only like two, maybe three 20 minute videos on one memory card. And they're not cheap. And I think instead of, yeah, instead of actually getting another memory card for this piece of shit camera, I think I'd be better off getting a new camera first. Then getting a memory card for that. Uh, but again, it's finding one at a decent price. I don't mind buying a used one off eBay. I'm not fussy. I'm not one of these types that I've got to go out and buy everything brand new. You know, my, my Windows 7 PC through in lounge is a um, refurbished unit I bought off of eBay for a couple of hundred quid. Uh, not only had a dual core processor and four gigabytes of DDR2 memory in it, and, and I got given that PC from the mum's neighbour, a non-working PC, I should say, because it's just a case with a motherboard in it and a power pack. There's no hard drive, or it had the memory, four gigabytes DDR3 memory and a quad core processor. And I wasn't actually expecting it to work, you know. It was come be given an old PC like that, there's got to be something wrong with it, right? No. Bought it at home, bought it into the kitchen here and plugged it all in and the motherboard booted up to the um, post screen. So I whacked it straight into my case through there and upgraded it. Still the same operating system, I haven't reinstalled Windows since I bought the machine a couple of years ago. I just upgraded the motherboard. The only issue I have had with that is that the uh, system stopped recognising that there was a CD-ROM drive there. And after I'm googling the error, error message, I have found a forum that um, linked to some instructions to go into the registry and change a corrupted registry file, which it turned out to be. So that was soon fixed, so I've got a working ROM drive on it now. I think it took me about a year to fix it because I don't use ROM drives very much unless I'm putting something to a disc. So I don't really have any game discs or music CDs or anything anymore. <clears throat> I suppose that's the only thing these sorts of drives get used for now is if you, I don't know, making a backup disc for something. You know, a backup disc for your operating system or a data disk for something, or a driver, you know, if you've downloaded drivers for your printer or your scanner or, or your webcam and you want to put the drivers on a CD and make a little bootable driver CD, then that's probably another thing you'd use the uh, CD drive for, especially if you want to uh, put the device on more than one system. Anyway, I'm rambling on about computers now, so I'm good.
I'll ramble on in another video. <laughs> so, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. GPU to put in here, so I don't have to worry about that. I've just got to worry about the um, front panel connect uh, cables. How oh, the fuck they only got? How oh, the fuck they got tangled up just for me unplugging like that? I don't know. together into two. What's this one? That's the power switch. That's right beside it. And I thought that he would somehow put power LED on the wrong terminal. Oh, the LEDs don't light, and I know I've got them around the wrong way. Reset switch goes in front of the power switch, and the hand LED that goes in front of the power LED. And theoretically, we should be ready to fire it up. Let's have one last, uh, get the batteries go in this port. One last, uh, check.
these screws up and we'll get a whoops in that. Otherwise, I can see we're not going to roll up the floor. I don't particularly need to do that. It's taking a little longer to boot, so I don't have us installing anything. We might actually be installing drivers for the new hardware. Have, uh, come up to the screen by now. Yeah, getting devices ready. Oh, well, that's a, another advantage with Windows 10 then. It looks like whenever you swap anything like this, it installs them automatically. That is actually a pretty handy feature, I think. Getting devices ready, 50%. Wondering what that is on the keyboard. That's a uh, compact laptop expansion bay or docking station, whatever you want to call it. Haven't got a uh, laptop that will go on the map. That's better. Put your tripod on it as well. Getting us higher here. There we go. Suppose it's installing all the drivers for the LAN. Is that LAN? Never done that. Bit dark question, really. Most motherboards have a LAN. It's actually one of the cables I forgot to plug back in. Got a problem there already. Um, 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 I need that. That's a driver. If I can get that out of there. Hopefully. Yeah. Just plug that out there out of the way. A metal tab got in the way. There we go. Oh, I see it's installing some updates as well. Well, that's weird. Because with that video I watched the other day, his automatic updates wasn't working. Well, they uh, seem to be working, though. They seem to be working on my machine, anyway. Uh, have to find a way to tuck some cables out of the way in this case. I may actually tidy them up a bit before I put the side cover on because I've got cables here, there and every friggin' where. And they could go under there. I'll wait until that's done obviously and I'll shut it down and tidy up the cables. Push that back. Because, uh, as you can see that's quite messy. That's even too messy for my liking. It doesn't usually bother me, but that's uh, rather messy. I'll sort that out in a minute. can run the cables better than that. Just 
I can't read it. Oh yeah, it does. Ah, so that's what the other USB header is for. Preparing to configure Windows. Well, hurry up and configure Windows. Seven percent complete. Don't turn off your computer. Yes, sir. Wee! Where's that red cross in the corner? Nearly put the wrong password in for a second there. My E on the keyboard looks like an F because it's wearing off. Let's just shift a few bits out the way of the mouse. when you put a new motherboard in on older PCs. What do you mean with the disk? Oh, I suppose it means the um, card reader on the front. Update successful. We have success. noisy ass hard drive finish what it's doing. And, uh, turn it off. <laughs> now let's turn it off anyway. Now oh, the sleep mode's disappeared again. So let that shut off. And stick you over here. Point you at the area of cables that you're going to be attacking in a minute. I like them switches on the power pack. You don't have to pull the plug. You know, I think it'd actually be easier if I just pull the cables and start in. CD-ROM drive bows. I don't know why you'd want four of one of these, but that's an option. Okay. Pull that SATA cable out. Instead of going over that, that can go under. I don't think I've got any zip ties up here, otherwise I'd uh, grab them. And I'd... Uh, zip tie some of these cables up. That's going under. So we've got a power cable here, not in use either. So that's another one that could actually go up there. Because see I could zip tie that to something in there so it don't fall off. Oh actually I know where there is one. I'll uh, go and grab that in a bit. 
all the front panel cables here can go underneath the hard drive cables, like that. Oh, yeah, put them away. Got one more, if I can get hold of it. Oh. That's all four of those. That's that. Smell someone cooking toast. Smells tend to travel quite well in this block. I think that's toast. I can smell someone cooking anyway. So you can really do with this 12 volt rail up there out of the way. Look at that. Pull that round and up and over. better at least. Just plug in the power for the front fan. All those wires can tuck in there. Uh, I may not need a zip tie actually, that may just sit up there fine. Okay. This is going to be fun, here's the torch. Might be easier if I unplug those. Just pull back there out the way and the case fan. So I can see the header. So what's this one? That's the reset switch, right. Look my round if I'm doing this. Let's do a reset switch first, which goes on the bottom. The orange and white power switch. Yeah. That goes opposite. Obviously, with a switch, it doesn't matter which way around you plonk the cables, they'll still work. Okay. So, hard drive LED. And I think, okay. The red's got to go on the X. Side. Go now, and then white for the power LED there. Green up on that one. So that's the front panel done. We bring the case fan cable back in. SOTA for the hard drive. I can go back in. So it is easier to plug these in from the bottom up. And you haven't got to try to get fiddle underneath everything like this. So you can actually see what you're doing. So there's a good useful tip for anyone doing this. Start at the bottom and work up. Right. You've got one last whirl. No, we won't, because I haven't turned it on. Mm. Yep, got the LEDs around the right way. There we go. One last whirl, let's 